What's good, man? This is for all the MMA fans, because I'm a boxing fan. But we're going to be watching fights that pissed off Dana motherfreaking White. The UFC president doesn't mean he's not without bias. And when Dana White feels a certain way about a fight, you better believe he's going to let the public know about Shout it. Shout out Dana White, man. I hope Dana White lets me, like, I hope he invites me to UFC fight one day. So I can just give him a ticket or some shit. So I can fly him and shit. I hope I get to get to that stage in life where people just love me so much. Because I always loved UFC for real. I just kind of grew out of it because my boxing, my love for boxing stood out. I didn't like how MMA fighters would disrespect boxers, and they still do. But I just had to learn that it's just like competition for real. Like, same way, or well, soccer and basketball players don't do it, but like a soccer player could probably call out a basketball player if they wanted to, but they really don't. But that's why I respect MMA and boxing, because I grew up on both. That's why I like the fights, because I love watching them and shit. As always, if you guys enjoy the video, please be sure to let us know by giving it a like. Dana White like a cool ass CEO so you don't too. And now without further CEO ado, and ranked in no particular order, here are ten fights that pissed off Dana them. White. Anderson Silva versus Demi and Maya. And what better way to kick things off than with one of the most infamously disappointing title fights in UFC history? Not only was this bout the headliner of an important card for the UFC on pay per view, but this event was also crucial in their attempts to corner the Middle Eastern market. Their first official show in Abu Dhabi since the dawn of the Zufa era. All was going according to plan, and all that remained was for the fights themselves to deliver. Unfortunately, the main event pairing between Anderson Silva and Demi and Maya for the middleweight title was, well, a very strange and quite underwhelming contest. Silva obviously had respect for Maya's elite grappling, but as the bout wore on, the champion's antics basically ruined any amount of competitive tension as he tiptoed around any real head-on collisions. In the post-fight, Dana White slammed Silva for his performance publicly, even calling the main event an embarrassment. I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed in the 10 years of being in, in this business. Is this your lowest moment as president of the uh, UFC? No doubt about it. Absolutely, 100%. I didn't go in and fight like a jackass for five rounds. I'm embarrassed, and uh, I feel like I should apologize to the fans, and I feel like I owe the fans one. What happened tonight was an absolute disgrace, an embarrassment for the UFC, an embarrassment for the sport. And, and I don't know if I've ever yeah, been I don't really like Anderson Silva. Francis so Ngannou uh, versus I mean, Derek cool. Lewis. And speaking of boring fights, Dana had already I soured on Francis really, Ngannou following never, his one-sided... I never felt like, oh, I need to watch this fight, you know? He never really brought me... Like, he never got my full attention for a fight, for real. Like, it was... Yeah, I don't even know. I always heard of him, but... He has a cool ass name, but I don't know. His, his fighting style is not my type. I, I realize that too. That like, I, the type of fighters I like are rare too. Like, everybody has their own style of fighting, and, and the fighters that I like be like, they're rare breeds for real. Like. He lost to Stipe Miocic at UFC 220, but when the Predator attempted to make a comeback at UFC 226, things got even worse. Facing off against the hard-handed Derek Lewis, this bout was pointed to as a collision of two insanely powerful punchers. With that much power on the table, one of these guys was eventually going to hit the canvas, right? Well, not exactly. Unfortunately, practically nothing happened for the vast majority of the scheduled three rounds. And when all was said and done, Lewis was the one to somehow get the decision victory. Dana pretty much gave Lewis a free pass, though, due to his back injury, and instead went off on Francis Ngannou, taking shots at his overblown ego and his handling of fame. Thoughts on Francis Ngannou, I mean, he had so much momentum behind him going into the Stipe fight, shows the flaws in his game a little bit, then comes back and has this fight where he throws, you know, 17 strikes the entire fight, something like that. Where do you feel a guy like that goes from here? Horrible. You know, I, I, I think that uh, everybody's Damn. talking about him. So that's why he sent his ass to boxing? Yeah, man, take his big ass, man. He can fight. Knowing his fighters, really. I knowing thought he was going to be the next guy. I think his ego ran away with him big time. Yeah, I can tell you that his ego absolutely did run away with him. The yeah. minute that happens to you in the fight game, start to fall apart. And this guy's ego just was so out of control. E ego is what hurt Francis Ngannou. 
And it wouldn't be the last time that these two would butt heads. Chuck Liddell versus Tito Ortiz 3. Damn, Chuck Liddell Chuck was Liddell. a phenomenal champion and a good friend to Dana during his time at the top yeah, of the sport. Chuck Liddell Tito cool Ortiz, as fuck, on the other bro. hand, despite once being quite yeah, close. Yeah, Chuck Liddell cool as fuck, bro. I, I think I watched one of his couple of fights, man. Chuck Liddell was good, man. Yeah. I remember watching a couple of Chuck Liddell fights. Chuck Liddell was sick, bro. To the UFC president is now among his biggest enemies and a guy that Dana is always he's happy like to take shots at if the opportunity presents itself. Tito and I hated now. each other. You know how many times Tito fought that I wanted to see him just get his ass whooped? Every time he got beat, it was absolute fun for me. So when Tito uh -huh. and Dana White's other nemesis, Oscar De La Hoya, nemesis. announced that they were bringing Chuck Liddell out of retirement eight years after his last fight to be served up on a platter for the much younger and in shape Ortiz, Dana was obviously. Oh, Chuck's, Chuck's once, almost 50 really years old. I love Chuck Liddell. And as a friend, I don't think he should fight. And anybody around him who cares about him shouldn't let him fight either. I heard last week the cokehead, Oscar De La Weirdo, is, is, is talking <laughs> that, that, that I don't have any, uh, you know, place to tell guys when to retire. You know, I don't tell friends when. First of all, it's called friendship, you Cokehead. Chuck Liddell's almost 50 years old and has no business fighting anymore. And when Tito went out there in too, old Scott, you can't just be telling people what to do, old Scott. Like, bro, people, men are men, bro. Men are men, bro. You can't just be testing men's balls, old Scott. Old Scott be trying to cross too many lines, bro. You gotta relax, bro. That's why people don't be liking old Scott, because he kind of like, he kind of is a little kind of, you know. He be on other shit, man. You can, and you can just kind of feel it. Like, you can just kind of tell that he be on other shit. Like, I respect him, though. But, like, his mannerisms are kind of not there. You know? TKO uh, the Ice Man and right then proceeded to celebrate like he had just won they UFC still be talking gold. Crazy about your ass. Yeah, this one was very easy to hate on. Anybody who claims to be a friend of Chuck Liddell and was anywhere near this fight is full of they're not a friend of Chuck Liddell. I hope somebody talks De La Hoya into fighting again, and I hope he gets <laughs> knocked out just like Chuck Liddell did in the first round. Cokehead nutball. Tyron Woodley versus Darren <laughs> Till. Sometimes Dana White just isn't a fan of a champion. Other times he just gets dollar signs in his eyes when a bright new contender finally he breaks through. UFC 228's fight, headline bro. match of Tyron and, Woodley versus Darren Till combined, combined these two scenarios into one. Woodley was trying. carving out an impressive reign atop the 170 pound division, too, but man. he wasn't exactly thrilling audiences. First of all, I'm going to give the fans a chance to boo. Go ahead and boo and get it out the way. There you go. Darren Till was the young, brash, marketable prospect who had broken into the top five ahead of UFC 228. I'm a Sean O'Malley fan. Like the promotion bro. Was well and truly behind him. How excited are you about Darren? Sean O'Malley, my I'm only excited. You know, he's, right he's got all the attributes to be a big star. Stylistically, I love the matchup for Till. But on fight night, Woodley proved a bridge too far. And after knocking Till down in the second round, he locked up a Darce choke and forced the tap. And you could just see how unimpressed Dana White was with the fact that Woodley was still on top. It didn't take long for him to start taking shots at the champion in the media once again. Since um, you've left the Octagon with the, your black belt and, and your title, have, have you spoken to Dana White? Oh, I haven't spoken to him yet. Did he already come here? No. He left. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, no. I had yeah. well, like Tyron Woodley good versus fighter, Demi and Maya. So Man, why did Dana White Woodley? dislike Tyron Woodley so much? Well, if we were to try and take on the UFC president's perspective, well, on the one hand, you had his constant complaint in the media. If I was a different complexion, I think Racism. people and fans would treat me a different way. And on the other, you had performances like the ones he turned in against Stephen Thompson and Demi and Maya. Highly tactical, but undeniably yeah, Tyron effective Woodley, like five-rounders that fighter, saw the bro. chosen one deal with two uh, incredibly kind of unique matchups. But when Woodley was guy. finished, stuffing takedown after takedown from Maya at UFC 214, Dana had nothing but harsh criticism for him and his low output title defense. What did you think watching that fight? About watching what fight? The Woodley fight <laughs> and then beating Maya. What did you think about watching the Woodley fight? That fight was anything but special. I don't even want to relive that fight in my head for another second. I mean, this sums it up. They broke a record tonight. The least punches ever thrown in the crappiest fight you've ever seen was 130 punches. They threw 60. That's how bad the fight was. Not pleased with Tyron Woodley's performance. <laughs> they broke the record for the least punches.
punches ever thrown in a title fight. There's not much to be pleased with or to talk about. I mean, what what really is there to talk about in that fight? When you get booed out of an arena, it means people don't want to watch you fight. Some might have seen it as a champion adequately overcoming a very tough matchup. Dana? Dana was definitely embarrassed by the welterweight king on this night. Israel Adesanya versus Yoel Romero. Look, when you're fighting a genetic freak like Yoel Romero, you gotta manage your risk levels. But when Israel Adesanya decided to specifically call out Romero just so he could add this highly feared and avoided fighter's name to his resume, Fans had every right to expect fireworks. This guy right here is a guy that no one ever calls out. I want to test myself against everyone of this era who's a beast. And he's a beast, so I'm going to test him. I mean, why else would Izzy specifically call out Yoel yeah, like Romero when he was coming off a loss? Well, as it turned out, Adesanya had no yeah, intention so of fighting fire like with you. fire. And Are instead, you? we were presented with one of the most boring he's title fights in UFC now. history. The last style <laughs> bender took home the win, but the fight was so yeah, low output Bender's that it could have cool, frankly bro. gone either like way. Safe to say, Adesanya lost himself back quite a few fans on this night. Too. Dana White could not help but be embarrassed shit. by the low-quality main event he had so fiercely hyped up like beforehand. Bender, you were pretty you pissed off uh, in I'm Abu still Dhabi learning, after I'm relearning the Anderson Silva Demi and Maya fight. Was I'm your level right of disappointment it, the same you know? with this one as you were after that? My this was a terrible fight. I mean, if you look at the UFC as a whole for as long as we've been doing it, you can literally put in one hand shitty. I used to watch Bellator. I used to watch Bully Beatdown. Yeah, I used to love watching Bellator, bro. Like, just watching like the amateur UFC, that shit used to go crazy. Cause you kind of get to see who risking their life to like just make it and shit. I used to just watch Bellator all the time, bro. And I just thought it was a cool ass name. I didn't even know what I was watching. I just thought Bellator was a cool ass name. So I was like, Bellator, okay fights that we've done you know what i mean the, the matchmakers didn't love that fight and didn't want to make that Gucci? fight but oh, yeah, the bummed. goofy fan in me said are you oh, shit me come on like, of that on, fight and didn't want to make that fight but yeah, but the goofy Goofy fan in me said, "Are you shitting me? Come on, this will be a, a, a fun fight to do." Now, hindsight is 2020. Probably shouldn't have done that fight. We should have waited for for Costa, but oh well. I was shocked to see the way that he fought tonight. He had a rough night and he had a bad showing, and I don't know. Dennis Holman versus Brian Eversole. This next one is pretty simple. Dennis Holman versus Brian yeah, Eversole. Not a fight these, that so is particularly I guess relevant gotta, in the MMA right history, save for fights, one particular reason. Holman these. decided to walk to the octagon and fight wearing a pair of speedos. This was, of course, before the Reebok Michael and Pettin, later bro. Venom deals. But even still, this choice of fight kit really did stand out. And Dana was quick to blast Holman after the fight, calling his choice disgusting. The shorts on Dennis Holman. Disgraceful, do, would you say? I mean, how'd you feel about that? I'd call it disgusting. That was disgusting. For the first time ever, I'm giving out a thanks for getting those horrifying shorts off TV as soon as possible bonus. <laughs> And I'm not joking. First of all, I'm pissed off that somebody that works for me let him come out with those on. Number one, it, it was it was not good. It, it, it will never happen again. I can guarantee you that. That's the last thing you want to be remembered for is is going out there and and, and making people watch five minutes of that. The fighter himself would later admit that he lost a bet, and that's why he did nah, what he did. But the damage was with that shit? George St. Pierre versus Johnny Hendricks. Even if you're one of the all-time greats of the sport, Sucks. that doesn't mean that you're safe from Dana's wrath. And I for mean, George, yeah, finding it with speedo is just disrespect to the sport for real yeah it's not some real shit i'll fire uh, i'll fire that nigga dana i'll fire him for you i'll be like you don't like that faggotry the fuck out of here St. Pierre, a closely fought matchup against Johnny Hendricks, Saint left Pierre. the world thinking that the great GSP had finally Saint been Pierre. thrown. But in the end, the I don't like niggas with cool ass way. names like that. I don't like you guys. Like, them French think they got cool ass names and shit. You're not fooling me, man. Them, them, lame, them names lame as fuck, bro. My name cooler than y'all's, bro. I, I'd die with that shit. I'd die with that. That my name cooler than the French. My name cool. I got a cool ass name for real. I, I'll say that shit probably, bro. I got a cool ass name, bro. Like y'all be thinking Saint Pierre cool ass name. Yeah, nah, bro. My, my like, bro, he's not even a saint, bro. That wasn't the problem. No, the issue, as it relates to Dana, came when Saint Pierre announced his retirement from the sport, effectively leaving the division saint, without its man. champion like, bro, and cheapening the belt bro. in the eyes I'll of the fans, given that he never officially shit. lost. I have a bunch of stuff in my life happening. I need to twang up my glove for a little bit. And to say that Dana was <laughs> not happy. That be me after my album sells zero. <laughs> after I sell zero first week, I gotta fucking retire for a long bit.
Murphy would be putting it lightly. Instead of giving one of the My God, champions... please retire. Jeez Louise. I'd have retired too. Bro got that. Bro almost lost his fucking eye. Jesus. Bro almost lost his eye. It's a nice that's why I be telling my butt. Like, that's why I be telling people you don't need a fight for real. Like, stay out of fights, bro. People don't be wanting it. People don't want to fight you. They just want to get the check for real. It's not worth it. Turned on him in the post fight press conference, slamming St. Pierre for walking away fight, after a performance like that. Did you see Jordan get smashed and hurt in the first round? It's about damage. I want what's fair, and that, that wasn't fair. That decision that happens, right? You, you don't you don't just say, hey, I'm going to take a, a while off, and maybe I'll be back, maybe I won't. You owe it to the fans, you owe it to that belt, you owe it to this company, and you owe it to Johnny Hendricks to give him that opportunity to, to, to fight again. Jan Blahovic versus Magomed Ankalaya. Draws are an incredibly rare. To fight again. Oh, Jan Blachowicz. What? Jan Blachowicz? Like, bro, this is all I'm watching fucking UFC. Like, bro, he ain't really in real life doing this. No, like, what? No, what? That's why they're staring themselves in the eye so close. They're like, they're literally mirror image. The only difference is bro got the bangs and he got the whatever that is. Bro got the paper bag. They made him got the same beard. He just don't got the Kenichi in it. I'm like, whatever, bro. I don't know what you're doing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is this fight look like it's gonna be weak. Like John Black of the Weeks and Manda Manamlik Lilik versus Magomed Ankalaya draws are an incredibly Ankalaya, rare like, sight bro, in the bro, sports mix. That nigga's beard, bro? Like when I see beards like that, I just wanna pull that shit, bro. Bro, how do niggas beards even grow that long? What the fuck? <laughs> Martial arts. And while from time to time seeing a stalemate in some what? lower prelim <laughs> fight is to be expected, a draw in a title fight is not usually the best outcome. And when that title fight just so happens to be for a vacant championship belt, that's where things get truly messy. Jan Blahovic versus Magomed Ankalaev were tasked with bringing the 205 pound division into a new era in the absence of its injured champion, Yuri Prohaska. But after five thoroughly disappointing rounds, Man, Dana White was left totally up. furious uh, at the lack I of drive from these competitors. What are you going to do? I think the main event was terrible. You know, what are you going to do? Did you have anybody winning in the main event? Did you I, don't have have I don't even know. I started to zone out after like three rounds so and the fact that I'd it was a draw I'd left him it. in a uniquely I'm awkward spot in instead of running the fight back and trying that. again white was so angry that he basically I give niggas that ufc i'm not down to get in the octagon for real y'all niggas don't like to see me in boxing anymore if anybody want to fight me we got to go in the boxing ring for real we're not going in the octagon ever i'm not going in the octagon Pulled both men out. <laughs> no, I'm staying outside. Okay, I'm staying the next outside. The belt I'm instead. Saying, what do you do now, right? I mean, well, I'm, you stand, I'm standing behind Dana White. <laughs> title split. You do Glover <laughs> versus Jamal Hill in uh, Brazil for the vacant title. Is that done? Done. Valentina Shevchenko done. versus Priscilla Castro. Finally, some hoes. I mean, <laughs> damn, cool last name, Valentina. Sim Zensko, man, cool ass name, man. That's a cool ass name of a hot style. Ronda Rousey, I used to kind of think Ronda Rousey was cute. I ain't gonna lie. Joera. And finally, we come to the bout that basically ruined yeah, the career of Mario Yamasaki. Valentina Shevchenko was always going to be a handful at 125 pounds, but setting her up for a <laughs> fight with Priscilla Cachoeira was never a good like, idea. In reality, they, it was a total they could probably mismatch. fuck me. And up. Valentina proved that on many levels, dominating Cachoeira from start to finish while doling out an insane amount of punishment. I, just, fact, I can't she see through the fat booty. 17 strikes to Priscilla's one. And when Yamasaki was asked fat. why he didn't stop, he was told that he wanted to give the underdog a chance to be a warrior. Needless to say, this infuriated Dana White. He said that he was allowing Priscilla to be a warrior. What do you think about that statement? I think Dana it's disgusting. White. I think it's disgusting. I think he's disgusting, and I never want to see him reffing ever again. For that idiot to say that he gave her the opportunity to be a warrior, no, no, you moron. You're in there to protect her from herself. He makes me sick. That guy has no business refing fights and and i promise you you're not going to see him again
Mario hasn't worked at a UFC event since. And hey, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to let us know by giving it a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. your bosses. You never know when they let you slip out on you. Hope you guys have a great night, great day, whatever you've been watching this, man. Keep pursuing your dreams and let's get it, man. 2024 is Ricky, all mine. Let's get it, man. 23, how soon? I'm turning up. Go bump, rub your subwoofers for now. I need y'all to get that shit plat. Yo.